Welcome to Sketchy. We take all the super complex stuff you need to learn and turn them into memorable visual stories packed full of everything you need to know on test day. Click the link in the corner or description to try for free for seven days. Now let's get to it. Seventh Inning Stack. In this video, we'll review hemolytic uremic syndrome, or HUS. Fun fact, this was originally called the blood and pee syndrome, or BPS, but that didn't sound science-y enough. So now we're just left with HUS. Actually, I'm being told none of that is true. Anyway, enough history. Let's play ball! HUS consists of a classic triad of hemolytic anemia, thrombocytopenia, and acute kidney injury. Hey, the name already tells you two of the three, so now you just need to remember that platelets are also involved. Let's look more closely at each one of these three components. The anemia is a microangiopathic hemolytic anemia and is Coombs negative, which means it's a non-autoimmune hemolysis, but we'll talk about that a bit later. See those red blood cells, or baseballs, getting shredded in that red mesh? That's the hemolysis happening in small vessels right before your very eyes. And right next to them is a lucky duck who caught a home run and is now cackling evilly to remind you that it's much easier to say maha than microangiopathic hemolytic anemia. Note to self, don't sit in the bleachers. The thrombocytopenia results from a consumptive process, with platelets being used up to make microthrombi. Fortunately, you rarely see bleeding in these cases. See that plate? See how it's covered in mud clots? Yeah, that's a pretty good one in my opinion. Now, you'll never forget that the low platelets are due to clot formation. And finally, there's the acute kidney injury, or AKI, which can range from hematuria and proteinuria to end-stage renal disease. HUS is one of the most common causes of AKI in children, and as many as 50% of pediatric HUS cases will require dialysis at some point. Our recurring sketchy symbol of a cracked kidney for AKI will help you remember the third leg of the HUS tripod. This is important, so let's just take a second to understand how these three pieces fit together. So, it depends on the etiology of the disease, and we'll get to that in a bit, but the first insult is endothelial injury. This sets off the cascade towards cytokine release and microthrombi formation. This is where you're using up all your platelets and end up with thrombocytopenia. Now you have a vessel full of microthrombi, and red blood cells are going to have a tough time getting through. This is where we see microangiopathic hemolytic anemia, shearing of the RBCs as they try to pass by. Finally, the kidneys take this pretty hard. Glomeruli and renal vessels are affected by this microangiopathy, leading to the decreased renal function, 